Welcome to Tag Talk, your source for opinions and discussion on Nerf hobby and community. I'm Jan Garrett, and with me, as usual, is Walkum S7. How you doing today? It's going pretty good, buddy. How about you? I am stressed and tired, but uh, uh. this is something we've been, I think, wanting to talk about for a while now, and I'm glad we're able to do so. Uh, we are going to change the format a little bit today. Uh, Walkum does know the topic, because this do is something... Well, a lot of people are talking about and seems important for us to talk about as well. And that is the recent changes with COPPA and YouTube and the settlement and all of that. So I'm going to give as brief a synopsis as I can before we get into our discussion for those of you that may not know what we're talking about. So in 1998, uh, the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act was uh, created and it was about not tracking information on children online, which is a good thing. It's a big plus for me. Uh, however, YouTube was not so much following that and was collecting data on children and, you know, making their money thing the way YouTube does. And the FTC was not happy about that, which makes sense. Uh, so they fined them $170 million, which is probably a pittance for uh, YouTube or Google. And then uh, YouTube jumped in and said, okay, we'll do all these things to make ourselves compliant with COPPA. And uh, there's a, a lot of things that, <sighs> a lot of vagueness is I think where we'll, we'll start this off with and is where a lot of the uh, arguments from both sides of this are coming from. So <sighs> YouTube is now enforcing a system where at the beginning of the year, creators will have to mark their videos as for children or not for children. If you mark them for children, you uh, lose basically access to everything on your channel. No, uh, no comments, no likes, no notifications, no searchability, no, uh, your, your ads are no longer personalized, meaning you are getting anywhere, uh, uh, supposedly anywhere from 60 to 90% less based on some numbers from ads, but that's uh, a point that we don't have, I believe, 100% accuracy on. But regardless, you lose a whole lot for your channel if you mark things for kids, uh, which is a bad thing for kid family friendly channels. That's some potential good things we'll get into later. But again, synopsis uh, if you don't mark your, your stuff as for kids and the FTC finds that you are not compliant and your stuff should be marked because they say so, then they can find you and a whole bunch of stuff that's really not good either. So with that Up said- $42,000 per infringement. <sighs> Whoa, when you have hundreds of videos on YouTube, that's a lot of money. One but... thing we should start right off the bat, because there's about every single person that's tried to argue with me on this. And uh, for some reason, our community loves to argue. It's a fine of up to $42,000 per infringement. It is not $42,000 per infringement. It is based on how much income the video had made and the severity, in their opinion, of said infringement. Keep Correct. that in mind. Uh, that is that is my understanding of it as well. Uh, there's already 13 people in the comment section going, ah, I need a source for that, Walcom. God, there's, I've watched so many videos and so many articles and so many, like my brain is just fried from this. Uh, like, I have lost sleep stressing over this, trying to understand the ins and outs so I can make the right decision, because this is no small thing if things go a certain way. Uh, and again, this is based off the information we're, we have, is this discussion being taking place. I can't even form a sentence properly right now. We don't yeah, have perfect knowledge. Really. <laughs> like, we don't have perfect knowledge, so this is from our understanding want to preface this all with that. Hopefully we'll get more clarity in the future, but this is important to talk about. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, oh, oh boy. So I don't know if you have anything you want to start off with any thoughts you initially want to share from your kind of week of COPPA so far. So that's actually the first thing I want to talk about. How come it's just a week of COPPA? We've known about this since at least the middle of October like it is not a new thing but in the last I would say three days now I've gotten 
probably over a hundred different people who have reached out to me through email, Facebook message, Instagram message, comments on Discord and my Discord channel. And everybody, oh God. And it's, I know it's just become like people are like, you know, they just get into this, but a lot of people think that like we don't know. Yeah. So I think Here. the the big kind of reason this is sparking this week is that uh, I believe it was just this week YouTube implemented the changes to the back end where when you post a video now, it asks you, you know, you have the option to mark it as for kids or for not for kids. So then a bunch of creators started making videos about it uh, because they became more aware of COPPA and the compliance issues, even though, as you said, I believe it was in September that the um, the settlement happened, I think. I could yeah, be wrong probably. on that. But but yeah, so uh, I saw you know videos from big channels and other hobbies like Jang Bricks. Uh, over on oh, the Lego yeah. side of things, where I've he seen was, that one. yeah, and that was, I think that was probably the first big one from like a, a niche community that well, really he's got started like 1. spreading. One point one or one yeah, point six million subs. He is one of the biggest Lego YouTubers. Um, so he was a big voice that had a lot of reach, and that then spiraled uh, several other Lego channels to announce they are closing their channels because how could they possibly say their content isn't appealing to kids? And that's that's a whole, okay, there's gonna be a whole lot of this, this episode of just like tangents and randomness because remembering things that, uh, so when you mark something as for kids or not for kids, the way the wording is on the for kids stuff is it doesn't necessarily need to be made to target kids if it, appeals it can be to children anything. yeah if it appeals to children by the way the wording is currently it can be uh some music that kids like is appealing to kids or a celebrity that kids like or a toy that kids like even though we're modifying them to do that's, things that's that the we one don't stipulation right there that has that's the only part of the entire coppa thing i feel that is really up for any kind of contingence in any kind of debate is the fact that they say toys that appeal to children. Yep, it's that vagueness in there that is creating the the panic in a lot of people, myself included, because we don't have certainty. We don't know whether the FTC is going to go ham on this or if they're going to take a more reasoned approach. What is the system they have in place to find the non-compliant channels? Why are they going the route they're going? What is, there's so many intangibles that we don't have information on. And the way I've looked at it is some of my content, I think could be marked as not for children because it's focused towards not children. There may be things that obviously children would be appealed to because they're toys or foundationally toys at, from the beginning. But then I look at other things like my review videos of stock blasters. Any review video of a stock blaster from a Nerf channel, I, I can't find a good argument to not have it be marked for kids under the way it's worded. Because we're not modding them, we're not changing them significantly to be not uh, appealing or, or informationally different enough that it wouldn't be you know seen as marketed towards children. So I, I, I don't know, I'm gonna ramble too the, much if I don't see- The question about that though, is are you reviewing this for children or are you reviewing this for the hobby? Right, and that's I had that similar thought. And the answer is obviously reviewing it from my perspective, which is a hobby perspective. Mm -hmm. But that goes back to that vagueness where a kid is going to search up, you know, uh, an inf infamous review, uh, whatever review, you know, of New Blaster. The Kids are also going to search up Minecraft characters during it's naughty true. things. Oh, oh. I and said that's, it's that's true before you finish thing. that. And that, yeah, I didn't well, know that existed. True. Because that, yeah, that is a thing. That's, oh my God. Do you not remember like the, the what is that stupid Mario cartoon that went all over the place where it was just some really bad cartoon about Mario going ham? And it's like, that's the stuff that kids watch. And like, that is a whole nother can of worms because... That's Mario, right? That's a you just put I'm things in my mind. mind that I didn't ever need. Oh God! I so here's my problem. I have two nieces. They are both eight and ten. They both just had a birthday, and the problem is I have to babysit them, 
And when I was a kid, you watched TV or you watched like yes. a freaking VHS movie yeah. over and over and over again. You watched, you know, Bambi until the thing wouldn't play anymore because that's just what you did. That was your thing. We didn't have on-demand stuff. We couldn't sit we, down and watch. We're old is basically what it comes down yeah, to. Yeah, we're it's, boomers almost. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. You, but when I was watching, like, you watch Bambi, you watch any, like, I can name any Disney movie. They're all good, great, usually in their own right. They're not vapid, I would say, almost intellectless entertainment. Now, I don't want to point out any other channels, because that will start a whole different kind of flame war. But there are so many channels out there, popular ones, with millions and millions of subs, that are literally mind rot. They do not do anything intellectual, no stimulation, nothing. When I see grown adults crawling around in cardboard boxes, pretending they are running from Hello Neighbor, there's a problem. And when these videos are 40, 50 minutes long and have got literally millions of views, that's the stuff that I kind of go, okay... I see why the FTC would be pissed. When I watch a grown woman play, like literally play, not like reviewing, but play with Barbies, not with a kid in the room, by herself. Granted, she can do whatever she wants, but the way she talks and acts and she makes it very clear that she's repeating things and using simple terminology and words so that any kid could watch and understand. That's the content that I think the FTC is kind of like, okay, that's kind of an issue. And then YouTube has been targeting all of these kids because no adult's going to watch that. Right. Read the comment sections of any of these videos. There's two different camps. There's like, wow, this is lame. Or, wow, you guys are so great. I watched this with my daughter and we had so much fun. So that's what? the way you you talked about that, actually mentioning the, the, the way – she would talk that it was uh, to be understandable to children is another kind of thing that's in the COPPA rulings is that's one of the things they look for is are they speaking in a way that children can understand? So that's definitely that falls under that realm. Um, and I, I'm with you in agreeing. There are certainly channels that do target and take advantage of, you know, uh, finding the things that children are searching for and, and not giving them necessarily good content, but just the same thing that's, that's out there and is not necessarily uh, doing good. So I, I can see how these creators are in their own heads defending themselves. Like, I entertain millions of children every day. I give them wholesome content and I'm so virtuous and great. And I'm sure there's... there. I, actually, I'm not saying I'm sure. I'm, I know there's plenty of channels that do do that. Yeah, uh, there are But there's, some, there's admit. And those... For those channels, I feel incredibly frustrated. Because the channels that yeah. are run, that are, are doing things right and doing things to, to provide children with good entertainment that is not only entertaining, but, you know, educational, informational, the stuff that, that parents look for for their kids, they're going to get hit hard by this. And as someone, I, I, uh, one of the videos I've watched from Daryl Eves about this, he was talking about how he has kids and his kids watch uh, a lot of their stuff on YouTube and they get a lot of good content on YouTube. There is a and, lot of good, like right. there are channels that do like, like what Steve Irwin used to do. Right. Like there and are so, channels that do that, that are completely educational. And those are, so, kids can watch those. I know my nieces right. watch those. But what stuff. happens to those channels when they no longer can make money and they can't, they can't sustain themselves on YouTube. I think, I think that's, what's going to be the, that's the piece of information about this entire thing that we don't quite know because in my head, those channels should, for the most part, be completely fine. Because even if you try to go, oh, they're four kids. It's like, I'm just a dude making videos that are educational, that a child as well as an adult could watch and be entertained. Because I've watched these videos. That's how I'm like, oh, wow, you guys are watching that dude. I've watched this for hours. It's great stuff. I love right. it. What, what episode are you watching? Or if you watch like a tech reviewer who reviews stuff, they don't use naughty language very often. They don't really always oh, use you, mature yeah. themes or anything. Family like friendly that. is the, the like, kind of... But I think there's a big difference between content that a kid can watch and fr family friendly and then content that is made 
for kids. And I, I can give out a dozen examples. And unfortunately, I just won't. Because again, I don't want people coming down on me with specific examples. I'm just giving you guys who spend a lot of time in this YouTube ecosystem a good idea of who I'm talking about. Right. And the problem is that until things happen, we really won't know. But I'm almost certain that like most of these channels should be completely fine. It's but, yeah. It's what I say. It's you said we won't know until it comes down, and I don't know about you, but I don't want to be the one that happens to be made example of. Like, sure, oh, you can I, argue. I actually... <laughs> uh, you can argue that you know, oh, it's going to be such a small number of people that are going to be fine to start or whatever. It's like, even if that's the case, I don't want that to be me. I don't want to. I, I don't. I have. Look. My anxiety and panic problems are bad enough as they are. I don't need that thrown on top of it. Like, <laughs> and I wouldn't want you to have to deal with that. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, if they go after a big channel that has funding, and like they, you know, think they can they can fight it in court and kind of get a, a statute kind of made or whatever uh, to resolve this, then that's something that could potentially happen but i'm kind of hoping that there will be some shifts and changes before the first of the year when this goes into effect oh there most the, definitely will be that's the hope something. um well i they know can't. the uh what is it the <laughs> the public public commenting is still open for till for, december 9th yeah. yeah so people can go in and say look this is this this is how this is going to impact people, maybe in different ways you didn't know. There was a lawyer that went to the FTC and actually talked with them and got the commenting uh, time extended to December 9th because oh. he, he actually brought them information and said, look, this is what this is going to do. And they were like, oh, we weren't aware of that. So we'll extend this period so people can bring us more information. And that was honestly a little surprising to me that they were as open to that. And that gave me that little bit of hope that maybe we'll see something happen, you know, if enough people kind of speak up and say, look, there are other ways. And of course, I'm, I am, I think in the camp right now, believing that YouTube could have gone about this a different way. Oh uh, yeah. They could have not used, uh, you know, not pushed so hard for these child channels to grow the way they have been. And then also been using targeted advertisement this entire, like, that's the problem. It's this yeah. entire situation is because of YouTube. The yeah. reason why these children channels and Finger Family and Spider-Man and Elsa and all this stuff is because of YouTube's terrible algorithms. And it's because they completely try to shut down any kind of content that has any kind of controversy to it whatsoever. Anything that is remotely, even remotely, Remotely mature, which is weird because there are content creators that do like videos for Five Nights at Freddy's that do nothing but yell the F word constantly. And yet those are videos for kids. It's kind of flipping weird, aren't it? I, I, I have no but, clue how their system works. And part of me fears they don't either at this point. Uh, that it's that plausible <laughs> deniability it's a, it's a, kind it's of a thing. It's a monster that they can't uh, control. They made it, and it just goes off. Yeah. And it's, well, it's like, look, if they nidhog. if they open it up and understand how it works, then they know. Then they're they're culpable. I guess it would be the way to put it. That you know they're they're supporting this, and if if they say we made this algorithm, this machine learning, and blah 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 blah, we don't. We don't know how it works. We can't, I don't know. Like that's, I, it's a strange kind of thing to say, but I, I'm not exactly the most uh, optimistic thinker when it comes to how YouTube and Google views the creators on their platform. And no, they, they've made them. it very clear these last four years oh. that they absolutely flip and hate us. Uh, they don't want us. They want Will Smith. They don't want us. They, they want the late show, you know, Jimmy Fallon, Trevor Noah, they, they want TV on YouTube and the big name creators that exist that bring him a lot of money. Um, so it, maybe that's a bit of a jaded view, but that's kind of... It's a healthy view. <sighs> it's currently how I, I'm, I'm feeling. And, and something I think that may as well bring this up now is when this started happening this week and kind of all coming to a head and, and looking through things, it came to the realization that if I have to mark my stuff as, you know, four kids, there's 
not much reason for me to make videos on YouTube anymore. Um, 100% and, and, agree. And I, I want to go further into this before anybody's like flipping out that, you know, oh, you know, you're, you're, you're just, you want the monies and you can't get the monies on YouTube. So you're done was, uh, looking at other things, other places I can post videos, other types of videos I can make. God, I love making videos. The big thing is take away the money side of this. Everything else that happens to a channel when they are marked as for kids is you may as well just bury your channel. It's demoralizing. It, That's the well, problem. It's further than demoralizing because well, yeah. you're not only are you no longer getting comments and likes and stuff like that in your videos, you are not showing up in search. People cannot find you. Your videos are not searchable. You get nothing from them. All you have is the people that are already there, which will not get notifications that you're posting new videos. I wonder so, if this is because it gets plugged into like the YouTube Kids app. Actually, have they mentioned I, anything about the YouTube Kids app? Just that it exists still and, and kids should use it. I'm guessing this but, kind of stuff will get plugged into the YouTube Kids app. Probably uh, somewhere along those lines, but I, I, I haven't seen much on the actual what they're doing for that yet, so I can't say I'm I've, super updated. But, but yeah, for me, one of the biggest joys of making videos is the interaction. Like, I read every single comment and I love to respond to as many as I can. I'm like a little behind on last week's video from responding because this week has been a panic fest. <laughs> but I want to catch up. But like, I, honestly, it brings me so much joy to read and respond to comments and interact with you. So if I don't have that, what, what's left? Like, I'm just making videos for myself and posting them so I can watch them? Like, I, I don't, I, I, it's that interaction, that sharing that makes this enjoyable. So yeah. if, if that's the case, I need to find somewhere else to post videos or shift to doing other types of videos, which admittedly, I think almost every creator goes through this. You want to do more than just the content you're currently doing. Cause oh, yeah. if you're, if you like creating things, you want to create more than just one type of thing. And whether it's on a separate channel or a channel that does multi content stuff, which is really hard to do. But th yeah, the point is like, I want to create and share and interact with people. If I can't do that on YouTube, why am I on YouTube? Like I just uploaded a video today to my second channel, which I do usually every couple of months. And it's, that's content that doesn't make me money. Right. It's just content that I do because usually there's something cool. I want to show it off. I can't put it on my main channel because it literally hurt my main channel, which is flipping weird. And that, that's, that's, that's why passion. you don't do. Yeah. And that's why people don't do multi content type stuff or multi, you know, different. I can't even words tonight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like this has got me so frazzled. It's why you don't see people doing more than one type of content because, uh, if you have a bad video on YouTube, your channel starts to tank. And the, again, and like, thanks algorithm. Yeah, really, it's what it is. Like, like I started playing the uh, new Pokemon game, and I was like, "Oh my god, this would be so much fun to review." I have an idea. I have. I know exactly how I do it. A fun. This would be a cool thing to shoot. And then I was like, "Well, why? Yeah. What? What? Where am I going to post that? I want to share I, it, but where am I going <laughs> to?" I can be the the enemy here. I can because I'm the guy who actually does make a living off YouTube. For those of you that don't know, YouTube is my job, and the reason why YouTube is my job because I used to do you know cell phone repair and stuff like that. I've worked at a whole bunch of different stores, managed a bunch of them, and so forth. When I moved, I was making enough money off YouTube to pay rent. So why not just stick with that instead of spending my time looking for a job and stuff like that? Everything was perfectly fine. So I just kept doing YouTube videos, and here I am, several years later. And if YouTube goes away, well, what am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to go out and look for a normal job. That's kind of all that has to go about that. But if I can't, like, I, I can still go out. I'm not going to stop playing with what I do. I'm not going to stop modding. I'm not going to stop building. But yeah. if I have to work every single day for, you know, nine to ten hours like I was, because I used to get to the store at what, 7.30 in the morning, and I was there until at least 7, could be much later, depending on if somebody walks in at 6.59 and wants to do an activation. I'd be there until 8, 9 o'clock at night. It happened all the time. And how much and time left do you have to mod? Five days a week. 
you, and I still managed to put out videos, but if yeah. you go back and look, I was putting out maybe one video a week, and that was like a basic review with mm -hmm. almost no editing, and I was editing the video on my iPhone while I was at work if nobody was around. I remember and, that time. I, I... Yeah. And I did it for fun because I was just like, yeah. how long did it take me to do like mods that I do nowadays in like a week or two? Like I, right now, my mods, they take a long time to put out. Painting L-Chan, which is the, you know, this will date the video, yeah, yeah. but that op, that took me like literally 25 hours over several days. And I pumped that out like, I think a week. Yeah, that's a lot Building of Building that investment. shotgun took me four months, but... So much of that was like redoing stuff that broke and trying to figure things out and slamming my head against walls. Like this stuff does not come quickly. And there are mods, like there are so many projects that it's like, I want to do them and I can't. There are mods that I want to do that I could just like, oh, I want to take this blaster. Like I want to take a surge fire right now and I want to make it into a little shorty shotgun kind of thing. Cause I think the surge fire is kind of wicked cool. And I could totally like just start doing stuff to it and spend, you know, two or three days on this project and, Put it out there but the biggest bummer about that is that if i you know have this thing it's like oh this is really cool and i do a video on it all the whole process and everything like that and it only gets like four thousand views i wasted so much time i could have done on videos that other like other things would watch and i don't even think that's people don't like the content i think that's youtube just sucking it, and it's a shot in the dark it feels like at times like every you, every video I, upload is like wow I, that one did good wow that one did terrible there's don't so many why. times yeah that. Or it's like you have this idea and you're like, this is going to be awesome. This is such a cool video. And then it just, it tanks. And you're like, oh. and then you yeah. like, you fart out an idea and it's like 100,000 views. Nailed it. So if, if you can't get, like, if I can't get the money for it, it's like, yeah, I probably won't make videos anymore. I'll probably and, just do my own thing. I'll probably and have still fun. go to things like end yeah. war and stuff like that if I can and enjoy myself. And that'll be my wars that I go to and whatnot. But yeah. It's going to be hard for me to spend like, oh, I got to work tomorrow. I got to do this. And then I have to sit down and spend four hours editing a video. Yeah. It's, like the passion for the hobby doesn't change. It just changes what we can do with it. Like, because yeah. if, if you have to go work a nine to five, that severely limits the amount of time you can spend to make videos. Essentially the, the crux of what that uh, that is. So this is why this is important to people that enjoy watching videos from their favorite creators. If they are sustaining themselves through YouTube and their source of income is removed, they have to find other sources. And if their channel is not one that say a lot of uh, uh, sponsorship or companies that like to sponsor, like, you know, the, the VPNs and, and the Squarespace and stuff like that. If, if, your channel isn't appealing to them to do sponsored videos, where are you getting your ads? Are you able to sell enough merch to, to sustain yourself? That's a hard one to do. Yeah, like, you have to be at a certain number. To be yeah, to so that. those middling size creators from like that, you know, say your size channel, just under 100,000 to, you know, a bit more than that. Like if you're under that, you're going to have a rough time of it most likely. And that's, that means they have less time to create. And that means there's less that's, videos from them. That's the biggest issue right yeah. there is that, and there are channels that like, I wouldn't recommend doing YouTube as your only job. I don't live like super luxuriously or anything like that. And it's some tough. months are really scary. The main problem with all this is like, if I could only make one video a week and make one decent video a week, then that would be fine. But YouTube does not let you do that anymore. You can't it's, do that on most channels. You have to be extremely lucky. Most of the channels that do that kind of content already had pretty massive followings to begin with. It's it's a tough one. It, it's So if you take away the money element, which is what Kappa will do to a lot of other channels out there, yeah, it's a, it's a scary prospect. It's not so much just like, and let's face it, you build something, you spend hundreds of hours building something. You want to show people this. Yeah. And the worst part, the biggest kick in the pants about this entire thing when you do something like that and you put it up and you get nobody pays attention to it. Like a couple of people are like, yeah, it's really awesome. But like YouTube's like, oh no, we're not going to suggest it. But you get 2% suggested video and everything else is browsed features. It's like, why YouTube? Can you tell me why? Yeah. Oh no, your video is doing great. <laughs> no, can you what? tell me why? Like my, why does this video do like, why are all of my videos at like the same amount of views? And you say, this one's doing great. This one's doing great. No matter what topic I do, it's always the same. Like, 
you can dig <laughs> through the analytics, but you, you, it's like this doesn't add up. Yeah, the main uh, enemy here it, from beginning to end, from the COPPA, the COPPA thing, I, the FTC isn't the enemy here. Although they couldn't, they shouldn't have put out a guy out there that like was literally like a boxing promoter <laughs> trying to just pick a fight with every oh YouTuber. Like God. we're gonna start shooting YouTubers right they in the head, like fish, fish the in a we're barrel. Drive up to they their said that that guy was talking out of his ass oh my so God. hard. I, it I was personally, bad. I I am not ready to say that the FTC is not potentially the enemy here. We have to see what's going to happen. Yes. They could be. They could well, go about this reasonably and intelligently. Or they could just shove a fist in everyone's face. And, like, and that's Coppola what I'm afraid of. is a good thing. Like, yes. It is a, a very important it's, thing. It's, yeah. Blanket the statement. The only reason we're having a problem is because of YouTube, though. Yes. They did the targeted ads. And they pushed the algorithm to give these channels so much following to get the attention of the FTC. This it, is like I will see. Like you're right with the FTC if we're if they're the villain or not. But almost every single problem we're having right now is because of YouTube. Yes, I. And yes, I don't know how the most freaking a trillion dollar company or whatever Google is is this flipping greedy. I don't. Why do you it. think they got as much money as they did? I know, I'm but now it's backfiring, greedy. isn't it? And they're not. Well, it's not we'll just see. them. It's not just them. It's not hurting just YouTube and its employees. It's hurting me. It's hurting yes. Genular. And in, in, a, in a less, let, let me clarify, since you clarify that you do make your living off YouTube, I currently do not. I would, yeah. I, I would you love to. Fashion. You made yes. a flipping competitive nerf thing. Uh, I, you, dumped, you dumped hundreds of hours into building that up. With, a, with as I you know, mentioned in the comments last one, with the help of a lot of people, competitive has happened. The, make yeah. sure that is, that is very you clear because it was not wouldn't me. wouldn't have done that without um, your YouTube channel. That is true. Without the impact and seeing the community and having that interaction with the community, I would not have known that it was capable or possible. Yeah. Um, so that is huge. And this, I would love to do this for a living. Absolutely. The concept of creating and sharing passions that I have for a living is mind blowing. But currently that is not an option. And so it, I hate to say it, it because like, you you had like there was a time when you every single one of your video videos spanked by, we and it's uh, like it's it's complete RNG. It literally is completely. Uh, we've random. had this discussion before, but I thoroughly believe that you have had a more interesting uh, voice and opinion on things that really intrigued people. Plus, you mod, I really didn't, so you had that avenue as well. So. That was literally my only road. <laughs> there was a, there was, this was a discussion. We could, we could do a whole episode yeah. on, on why Walcom shot past Jangular in, you know, three years ago and, uh, and whatnot. But it's, it's deserved is the way I'll put it. You, anyway. you grinded and you earned it. And the fact that it's now this in a, jeopardy. This isn't about me. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm is, fine. Like everybody, like, I think that's one of the things I have to say to us. If I have to stop doing what I'm doing, yes, my life will probably get complicated in other ways and easier in others. Because, like I said, I don't make a glamorous living doing this. I pay rent. I buy food. But you get to do what you love. And, uh, yeah, I get to do it. I could do so much more with more money if Google would stop sucking. Or if there was some (laughs) easy way to know, like, oh, you just need a better camera. You need to do more B-roll editing. Like... But if, if that I was the, the case, secrets, where my look, I spend so much time editing my videos because I like kind of that aspect, the filming aspect, like it's what I went to school for. So like I can have fun doing that. That clearly has not made my channel blow up. So there's more to I it like than just stuff. having. <laughs> thank you. I, but but my point is I that is not <laughs> that is not what makes a channel popular it's the person behind it the message behind it and and the content uh, don't tell me that i oh. actually i refuse to believe that because there are so many crap channels out there that have way more than both of us and we both know <laughs> those people are so vapid and brainless and talentless and they just i that has to be like pure luck Should, like we that, can say there is there 20. is there is some luck element to it but you have to have something to some degree. Regardless, we are getting way off topic. Yeah, I think and I'm here. trying to reel you back I, in. I know, but I'm I'm <laughs> I'm feeling it tonight. I am frustrated and like I'm just. I I'm you want to be frustrated? I I will give you something to be really. I'm you can see I'm angry. So 
one of the things that really got me about the Kako thing was the amount of people who keep talking to me about it. It's like, oh my God, Wolko, have you seen this? All the posts on Facebook that I see every day, all the posts in Discord, I've gotten multiple messages from everything and the comment section. But it felt like before it was people doing mass hysteria. And that's basically what it turned into. Nobody knows anything, so it's turned into mass hysteria. Would you believe it if I told you that there are people using this to bully people? How? Oh, your channel's definitely for kids. I sure hope you're ready for the FTC changes, buddy. Oh. And do you think that's bad? Here's the screenshot. I'm going to make Jangular edit this in. And I, this channel, it's nothing. Whatever. You can blur it out. You shouldn't. This person's a piece of trash and they're just using a throwaway account. The point is, how bad do you think it's going to be once these changes drop? Assuming nothing has changed. Assuming that everything we know now is exactly what happens when cop with the FTC changes and everything go into effect on YouTube. How bad do you think it's going to be with a bunch of idiots out there who are going to do stuff like, <laughs> I, re I reported your, your channel to the FTC under COPPA. Get wrecked. <laughs> how would, how, do you want to bet how bad that's going to be? Yeah, that's I had not thought about the... And do you think that's funny? Of course not. Does anybody think that's yeah. funny? I, I don't mind if I have to stop making videos. I don't care. But when you're bullying people about it, when you're bullying someone's livelihood or their extreme passion that you could get just a smidge of if you watched any of their content, you think that's a good thing? You think you're proud of yourself? You think that's, oh, it's such trolley lol. So here's my... Whenever it comes to, you know, people talking trash or trying to bully people online or anything, I always just kind of, personally, I try to let it roll off. I look at it as like a, you know, this is probably a kid who has a rough home life and they need some sense of control. This does not excuse what's being done. But like when it comes to something that actually genuinely could affect someone, that's when it becomes a major problem. Uh, where it is, you know, not at someone that's just going to roll off and, and not have any real impact. Like the, you know, the comments we get, it's like, go, go kill yourself or something. And you're like, okay, kid, that's, you're having a rough day, whatever. But if it's going to result in a channel being lost or FTC, if there is going to be some sort of like action that you can, you can flag a channel as not compliant or whatever, like there will be issues. People will misuse that tool. When you were talking about the Lego creators telling people that they were deleting their channels. And honestly, Lego, that's a hard one, man. There's difference between building plastic bricks. There and is. Bricks. But Even there's though those no, are awesome. There's no way to say it doesn't appeal to children. Exactly. There, and there's, like, I can make the argument all day and long just because of where I am that my content isn't for kids. I don't really make content for kids. Um, I've actually gotten a message earlier. It was really confusing because it said, I tried to watch your video with my six-year-old son, but there were too many expletives on my Fobo <laughs> review, my Fobo 3 or whatever it was. Oh, yeah. I don't even, I don't, I'm pretty sure I barely started using even mild language until today uh, or recently. But like when I hear that, when I hear these people are, they're terminating their channels or they don't even yeah. know what's going to happen yeah. and they're terminating their channels. They're preemptively pulling the cord out of fear. And, here's, and then you have these flipping morons trying to act like, oh, I'm going to report you to the FTC, get your channel and get you fined. <laughs> here's the, the reality of it. Like, if we don't get more information and if things are not going to change and it looks like my content is going to be for kids, I'm going to have to mark it all as for kids on the 1st mm -hmm. of January or before the 1st of January. And at that point, my channel will effectively be dead. So, I mean, that's just a real statement I have to make right now, that, that there is a very real chance that come the first of next year, my channel will not be doing anything if things don't change. And I will be looking for a different path to, to make videos to share with people, whether it's Facebook or, or, you know, I, I don't want to stop making videos. I, I really don't. Whether we keep this going as a podcast or something along those lines or, you know, that's one thing uh, I've looked at, you know, posting videos on Facebook, utilizing Instagram more, what other platforms are like, I, it's not like I've been sitting around just going, oh, you know, I'm going to have to do nothing on YouTube. It's like, well, where can I still make stuff? Because I like, yes, like I said, I want to make a living doing this, but I enjoy doing this. 
And I don't want to stop doing this. So that's where the fear and the panic come from that have kept me up at night this last week. Like, I... I feel like we, we've gone less, way less into detail than I intended, and it's become more of a uh, an emotional uh, uh, frustration venting episode. That's that's what I thought um, this episode was going to be. My apologies. No, no, I like I I wanted to come at this from. A, I assumed there'd be some, but I wanted to come at this from like a, a, a reasonably intelligent factual standpoint, which well, we, we got started the facts out of the way. We, we, we started with, we that, don't know but, uh, anything else. That's, what more yes, can that, we possibly say about that's it? That's true. That's true. I, I, like, I was, all I can say is like on my side of things, I'm not worried. I I'm don't glad. from the bottom of my heart. I do not make my content for kids. Is my content watchable by kids? Yes. But from day one, I have done my best to make my channel and keep my channel focused on the hobby and myself within it. And I love to see kids who want to go out there and make their own blasters and do yeah. stuff like that. I think that's the best thing they could possibly do. Cause this hobby is extremely healthy, not just from a physical standpoint, but all the skills you can gain. Like if you get it's good amazing. doing like body interrogations, if you get good at painting, those are legitimate skills that you can use as a trade to give yourself a living in the future. Oh yeah. If you get it's, good at like Bondo work and airbrush painting, go to a body shop, apply. You could probably get a job there. It's Tattoo STEM artists, learning. It's it's yeah. it's stuff that like schools love. Like if you if you break down the the actual technical stuff beside behind it, like schools are into that. So like there's so much value in this hobby that it's amazing that we get to have so much fun and do so much cool intelligent stuff too. Like. I love being, I say this kind of sometimes that I like being the least intelligent person in a room. It's like, I'm not dumb, but I'm not brilliant. So anytime I get to be around smart people, I love that because I get to learn. I get to like, just, just the intelligence oozing off of them. I get to pick up some of it. And I have learned so much from this hobby and the people I've met in it that like, I, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just kind of like, I, I love this hobby. People, I don't want to stop. They see the thumbnail and they see the title of the video. They'll see the, they'll see the length of it and they'll understand. I, I, and you know what? This might be one of the more, the less performing probably. episodes. Put up, but, but it's I'm okay something with that. that needs to be said. And the people who care about this hobby and care about us will watch it the entire uh, way through maybe maybe i'll name this something stupid like youtube destroys nerf or something like that so yeah, it's, I, you know what? so it's I, like go for it, go for it. <laughs> it's like I, I fully agree but I, I it may not think, be far off i do think at the end of the day there is right now we don't know anything and the, yeah, until yeah. until we know something until the until the first shot has been fired we won't know what's going on if the first shot hits me i'm gonna fight it if the first shot hits drac i'll stand right beside him. If the first shot hits yeah. Coop, again, I will stand right beside him because I don't feel like their content, for the most part, there are exceptions. There's exceptions to my content too, and I want to be very careful about, but, about that. But for the most part, our content isn't meant for kids. It's watchable for kids, but we try not to make it for kids. As I mentioned, I think our stock blaster reviews are the, the things that we will have to look at the most. Yeah, that's, and that's, going forward, there will definitely be changes in the way yeah. I do my stuff. And yeah. I think uh, it's perfectly acceptable if you make a review like that, that you say, like, yeah, this might be good for kids. But again, yeah. it's like it, uh, a parent could be watching that. I mean, people, I right. look up reviews and that's, of products I, all the time when I'm yes, walking through Walmart. Yes, I've made videos that are like guides for, you know, holiday gifts for, you know, that, that are meant for parents to watch. Kind of, you know, a lot of channels do stuff like that. But yeah, like... I, I think, as you said, we don't know enough. And and I think this may have to be part one. We may have to yeah. like wait and see if we get more information and kind of do an update episode of this. Um, I, that's probably a really safe bet. So I think, I think, because if we don't do that, I'm gonna stand here and feel like we haven't addressed every little thing because that's the way my mind works and it doesn't stop and it's a problem. But yeah, I think we, we, we call it here and I want all of you to share your thoughts because this is a topic that a lot of people have thoughts on. And it's a good thing to discuss them because we don't want misinformation. We want people to be as informed as possible for this. 
so that if it does go poorly, people know what's going to happen. If it goes well, then we can just like, whew, okay, you know, we dodged a bullet, cool, you know, we're, we'll be more aware of things in the future, and I'm glad this didn't end up being a catastrophe. Like, that's... And knowing is half the battle. Yeah, so hopefully, fingers crossed, things go well, but please, leave your thoughts down below. I, I, I will read every single one, as I always do. Um, thank I you all. If you... one final statement, really quick, like... Yeah. Um, if you did watch this far and you are a content creator and you're, you're, you're stressing over this like Jane Goulart is, I do want you to take a moment, take a deep breath, and think really hard. Is your content for kids? I don't want you to sit there and think, what if my content is for kids? What if they think my content's for kids? I don't want you to think about that. If you believe that your content isn't for children, that it is not your dedicated fan base... And the way the FTC rules things, like oh, if it's if it if if it's enticing to children, we I know what that means. I know when they're using like things to grab kids' attention to click on the video, and then something entirely different. I kind of get what the FTC is doing with that, but I, I want you to ask yourself those questions deep down inside, and that will probably help you get through this until we know more. Yeah, it's a good way. I think it's a good place to end it. Thank you all so much for watching. We will see you all next time. Have a great week! Yeah. <laughs> oh.